So g'day guys, welcome back to a, another episode. Um, this week I wanted to talk about something that uh, I haven't seen a lot of uh, videos or, or content about and, and that's about um, chassis bracing or strengthening as it might be known to, to some others. Um, it, it's really, um, I think, in, in comparison to a lot of other modifications that you do on your vehicle, um, you know, very um, good value for money um, when you think about what the alternative of a broken or bent chassis could cost you not only in repairs but recovery uh, ending your trip uh, all sorts of, of heartache uh, particularly that uh, a lot of it I don't think would be covered under uh, normal insurance or any type of insurance for that matter um, but yeah, so that's my thoughts. So I'm going to take you through um, what I've done on this. So let's get stuck into this video. So the particular plates that I used were uh, a superior engineering kit. Um, it's, so it's four plates, an inner and outer, for both sides of the chassis rail. Um, they're approximately 8 to 10 mil thick. Um, and that they, they retail for $190, I think last time I checked the site and, and that's what we paid. Now I had those, so that's just for the, for the plates themselves. You then obviously have to have them um, welded in as per the instructions by a certified welder. Uh, and then obviously after that job's been done, uh, a, 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 certifi a certifier will come out to you. Uh, inspect the job and make sure that it meets all the, the criteria of the Department of Transport. They will then certify that uh, that modification and provide you with a blue blue, a blue plate. Sorry, um, yeah. So they'll provide you with a blue plate to uh, stipulate that that modification is certified and legal. So uh, as with the tray and canopy, uh, in conjunction with that work that, you know, Pinnacle 4x4 up here in, in Brisbane um, did the install and fit out of the MIT stuff and, and my power um, set up, uh, I also uh, had that chassis uh, strengthening and bracing done at the same time. So it was all organised through Pinnacle. Um, again, I knew what the price of the kit was. Um, all up the job from start to finish cost me $1,250. Um, obviously, um, the, the dearest part of the whole exercise and the, and the most uh, critical part is around the quality of, of welding uh, and the time it takes to weld. So in this particular vehicle, they had to drop the tank out, the rock sliders off, drop the wheels, that sort of stuff. So there's a fair bit of time involved. So if you're thinking, geez, 209 or 200 bucks for the for the kit, and you know another thousand bucks just to weld it in and, and, a, and a mod plate, well, I can assure you that that thousand bucks is is very well spent. Um, again, as you've seen or as you will see, the the level of workmanship and, and welding that's gone into this, I couldn't be happier with the overall finish. It looks very factory. Uh, there's no bird shit welding on this job, that's for sure. So. Um, Twelve hundred fifty dollars. Uh, again, one of the one of the cheaper mods I've done, and, and, and absolutely gives me peace of mind. We're going to head off. Uh, we're going to cross the Simpson Desert later on in the year. Um, and again, you would have seen some of the images that I, I've shared uh, in this video or in the thumbnail uh, around uh, you know just how common um, bent chassis are or broken chassis are particularly out across, uh, crossing the, the likes of Simpson Desert, I believe there's a bit of a graveyard um, of bent and broken chassis along the way, particularly out at Mount, Mount Dare there. Um, so I don't want to become another one of those casualties and woulda, shoulda, coulda. Um, we just bit the bullet, got it done, get it done right the first time. So you can see here guys that um, that plate runs all the way along from basically in line with the back, very edge of the of the back wheel there, um, inside and outside, all the way through, past the front of the front tyre, and up to the back of the cab here. So inside and outside, fully welded around every one of these holes, top and bottom, 
by a qualified welder. Um, definitely the way to go. Um, if, it's, if, if you haven't got a qualified welder to, to do this, um, I, I don't think this is a handyman job. Um, particularly, you won't get it certified. Um, so, look, it's a small amount of outlay for a, you know, a, a massive peace of mind, and particularly given the consequences when it all goes wrong. So, in my book, this is an absolute must if you're towing heavy weight, you're, you're carrying heavy weight, um, or you're traveling remote. I, for one, think this is a great peace of mind. Um, and a great um, a, a great modification to have to, to your vehicle um, going forward. So similar to the passenger side, um, here you can see the driver's side where it starts at the back of the cab there. Very neat, very clean, tidy, looks very factory. Um, going all the way through to the back there. Um, to be honest, if you didn't know what you were looking for, you probably wouldn't even know it was a factory um, factory chassis or factory job. Uh, the quality of welding and that sort of stuff done uh, on this particular job, I'm very, very happy with. And uh, so what you'll also get is you'll get a mod plate, um, which I've got here. So you'll just get a mod plate um, in Queensland um, that's a mod plate that's required to stipulate that it's been inspected and certified to the appropriate standards. So, um, again, that's why it's worthwhile getting the job done correctly uh, by professional. Um, you know, we, we were away last weekend too. Just uh, We just did a quick overnighter. I didn't film anything. We just went out to Darlington Park, which is pretty local to here. Uh, about half an hour run from, from my house and uh, we were just sitting back there having a drink in the afternoon oh, sorry the following morning and I was watching some uh, some vans uh, being towed out and I saw this dual cab 79 series with, with a significantly sized van on it and absolutely that, that, that chassis rail was, was bent um, you could see the difference between the level of the canopy at the, at the top to the bottom, and you could see that that had been certainly um, certainly bent. So it's more common than what you might think, and um, I think it's easier to um, go down a precautionary road than it is to try and, and, and fix it after after the fact. Uh, I don't think your car would ever be the same again once you've once you've bent that chassis. Again, uh, on the website, you know, there's certainly um, disclaimers around um, what this is actually designed to do. It, it doesn't increase your GVM or your GCM. It doesn't, um, it doesn't perform or, or claim to give you any uh, additional load carrying um, capacity at all. So you must maintain within your vehicles uh, registered and approved GVM and GCMs. This is this is not what this is designed for. This is purely to strengthen the the chassis rails, um, particularly um, on on dual cabs or or leaf sprung vehicles where they would typically then go and add airbags. And then if you overinflate those airbags, you've changed the I guess the the, the centre or the point along that chassis which is going to to bear all of that weight. And that's from what's been explained to me is what, what's the common cause. So right now from that full length, um, you know, we've got three points along that chassis. We've got the, the front and the rear of the leaf spring. We've also got the airbag, but right along that chassis now we've got those plates inside, outside welded in. And, um, you know, it, it feels so different to drive. I can't explain it, but um, it, 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 it just feels um, much firmer. Um, and, and a good firmness, if, if that makes any sense. It feels really rigid and tight. Um, you know, I didn't, I didn't know any different before doing it, um, but afterwards when I drove out and every day, I can feel the difference that this has made um, to the vehicle without changing, you know, any settings on suspension or spring rates or anything like that. Drive in, have this done, drive out. You, you will definitely know the difference. And, and, it, and it's, uh, again, guys, I just, I can't recommend this modification enough.
So that's it guys, that's my thoughts. I hope you found um, found this valuable. Um, again, I just want to share, you know, my experiences and, and, you know, the things that I see as being important. You know we're building this up for, for travel and uh, full-time travel at some stage, hopefully. But um, yeah, you know, I, uh, again, hope you got some value out of it. So if you did, um, you know, give us a like. Uh, if you're enjoying the content that we're putting out, um, you know, it'd be great if you could subscribe, hit the uh, notifications bell so you, uh, you get notified when we release new videos. So coming up over the next few weeks, um, you know, there'll be different, a few more other videos based on, on product reviews. We're going to review the, the Darchi 270 degree awning and, and my thoughts around that. Uh, I am sort of in two minds as to what to do with that I'd love to, to do something different but in saying that this one's certainly not not giving me any reasons to change it out at this stage um, I'm also I'll get a lot of questions about doing a full sort of uh, rig walkthrough or, or rundown of, of all the modifications on the actual uh, full drive itself on the Ranger so we'll do that um, with all of the videos predominantly have been about the tray canopy 12 volt fridges that sort of stuff so i'll give you a run through um, of what we've actually done to this I've done a lot uh, it's very very capable for what it is um, so yeah that'll be another video that comes up soon and then like i said in, in a couple of other videos we're going to be heading out to scenic grim adventure park um, over Easter so um, yeah, we, we're going to jack off the canopy which will be fantastic um, we're going to set up a base camp so I'll take you through my thinkings uh, the likes and dislikes uh, I know or I'm hoping that I had a, I had a thought process and an image in my mind around how this would all work and I've yet to test that theory so fingers crossed that all comes, comes through um, how I planned um, but I'll let you know um, what, what my thoughts are and anything that I, I'm going to change just to get that right. And we know you always fine tuning your setups uh, after each trip. Um, and then later on in the year, we're going to be doing uh, three weeks. Um, we're going to head from Brisbane up to Birdsville and we'll then uh, cross the Simpson from east to west. Um, we'll head out to, at this stage, we're planning on doing sort of a Fink, Fink Gorge. Uh, Kings Canyon, Uluru, um, probably head back down then I think to Cooper Pedy and loop back around uh, South Australia, uh, Western New South Wales and back into Queensland and home again. So that'll be a three week trip, uh, it'll be myself and, um, and Tash in, in the Ranger and then my, my son and, and daughter-in-law and grandson they'll be they'll be coming along as well so we'll have uh, two vehicles on that trip as well so similar to what we did um, when we did the cape now we're not towing anything this time so it'll just be we'll be self-sufficient out of the vehicles so um, that'll be again um, the the best test for for the setup that we got here anyway so with that wrap it up appreciate um, you tuning in uh, until next time cheers enjoy yourselves and get out there and explore eh? good on you